Hey there. Before we start this episode, I wanted to jump into your ears straight away and let you know how you can support us best with this podcast so we can keep this going. So the most important thing that when you have listened to this episode would be share, 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 spread the word, drop our name, drop us in the conversation. If you see a question popping up somewhere, say the damn parenting ladies, they have an episode on this, pop the episodes out, get us into the conversation of the communities. This is the best way to support Eva and me. And give us a like on Spotify, give us a follow, jump over to Instagram, damn parenting podcast, Make sure that you spread the word about what you like, why you like the episodes, and that you spread the knowledge that we are putting out there so it can be heard and received by everyone who needs to hear this. And this is what I just wanted to drop with you before now you can enjoy the pet or an expert episode. So let's see what's going to be on. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Damn Parenting, your English-speaking parenting podcast from Amsterdam. We are your hosts, Maren and Eva. We have Dr. Naomi Gibson with us today. Hi, Naomi. Hello. Hello. And we are talking today about one of my new passion topics, which I really dived into this year, and I'm still amazed by it. Amazed, scared, and still shocked that there is so little information about this topic out there. We are talking again about matricence, the process of becoming a mother, being in motherhood, stirring your ship through that wild ocean of emotions, hormonal change, like this whole whirlwind of things and change that's coming your way, even before you get pregnant and then navigating this whole yeah new new chapter of your life and so we thought let's bring on Naomi who is a psychologist who can talk a little bit more about the brain changes the hormonal changes the little not the little but the big neuroscience change behind that whole topic so we thought bring her to the table ask her some questions but also get the information from Naomi directly. What does matricins and this whole process really mean? What does it look like? What does it feel like? And where are points in this journey where it is going off the normal chart and going into a place where you should be seeking help and you see the warning signs and you can differentiate between this is a depression, this is a mood swing, and this is something that is caused by matricins. This is a particular state of feeling that is connected through or to the process of going through matricence. So mm. can you educate us a little <laughs> bit more about this topic? <laughs> wow. Start yeah, your TED talk. This, yeah, just this massive topic. Um, yeah. Maybe we should start with defining as we know it what yeah. matricence is. And it is a kind of a sensitive neurocognitive developmental period if you wanted to call it that that is from pregnancy through to to motherhood having your baby being a new a new mum and onwards that has this sort of bio psychosocial all of it together so there's biological changes hormone shifts brain changes brain kind of neuroplasticity change. neuroplasticity is exactly it so neuroplasticity for those that know is when your brain becomes plastic so called which is a bit of a strange way of thinking about it where you are primed to readily acquire new knowledge and skills. So that is definitely the case in new motherhood, isn't it? The way that you can learn how to feed your baby, be attuned to what they need emotionally, wake up several times a night, have the sort of skills to be able to plan your day and all these kind of very kind of active things is all because your brain has become more plastic, more able to take on new information and learn new skills and knowledge about your child but also knowledge about yourself and your kind of social world so yeah parenting is a very complex behavior that we probably take for granted that it is but on a sort of a brain level the way that you can manage all the demands of of parenting is um really complex and that's probably sometimes part of why we feel so bloody exhausted one very big part of this while you were speaking and i was like imagining okay how does this look in the brain and this is this was i guess one of the biggest changes and shocks going through this process is that when i was learning something new in the past my base was always stable Mm -hmm. so i could i was putting stuff on that base like i was expanding but with motherhood the first time i felt and well not the first time actually the second time now that i see the links between adolescence and matricence where you have those 
crazy shift where like in puberty, your base is shaken. Like your base mm. is completely shaken one time. You have this mess of all these Lego pieces and now you're putting them back together. And then you put stuff on this nice Lego castle. But now with motherhood, it's like you've built this nice big castle and then your toddler comes in and smashes everything around and your base is basically you, you the, the base crumbles. And this is, I think, the, the biggest learning that I've had that it really shakes you to the core it really, you question and you reassess the base, the core. Mm, what yeah. are my core values? What are my core beliefs? And also you go through, you go to that core trauma in some topics and mm -hmm. they are addressed where you thought, yeah, this is like, I've dealt with this, but then you find a whole new layer of this topic. Yeah, yeah. It was never so this, pushed in the same way. Yeah. Yeah. So this is really the, the biggest the biggest learning that I had that it shakes you to the core. It is a chance then also. It's I don't want this to come across as this something scary and you're falling apart, but this is a chance then to really build up the new core, build up the new base with all these new factors. And this takes mm -hmm. a lot of work and it feels completely okay that this feels so exhausting. And you're literally, I felt like I was shaken, like mm -hmm. everything was shaken, everything was loose. And now I had to kind of put this back together. And and now with my child turning four, I feel like now it's finally like solidifying again and I have like a stable core and now I can start building on again instead of completely renovating the whole place. Yeah, but it's interesting thinking about the um, Lego analogy because yeah. our job in matrescence is to not build the same building mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you're yeah. totally renovating. And sometimes it feels like the foundation's crumbled, as you said, but it's about putting those pieces on, learning new things about yourself, learning about your child, yeah. learning about all of these things to build something different. Whereas I wonder whether there's a still a kind of common, yeah, a common narrative around sort of going back, bouncing back. You have your baby and then you go back to who you were, whether it's not, it's not possible to do that. It's not possible on a on a brain level. Your brain has completely uh, shifted and changed. Your um, social world has normally completely changed. Your way of relating to people. So going back is not an option. In the same way, going back to being a ten year old is not an option when you're through adolescence. You're the only way is through it to get to to adulthood, and that in itself can feel quite kind of confronting sometimes. Of like, okay, this is just this is a permanent shift that's probably quite welcome, but it's also sometimes a bit frustrating. No. And plus, while you're doing all of this, you have society who bombards you with the picture of this is how motherhood should look like. Mm -hmm. I mean, take a look, just brow just type in YouTube diaper advertisement baby food advertisement. What do we see there? We see happy mothers enjoying it, lifting their child up, smiling every moment. You don't see any of this other shit when mm -hmm. all these ads are maybe, I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes out of this whole 24 hour day with a newborn, with a child, with a toddler, where lying on the grass with their bum out and it's so <laughs> cute and you pluck the flowers and everyone mm -hmm. is enjoying themselves. Like I can count those moments on one hand in a Last four mm. years where to this intensity and this joy and this bliss so this is also yeah seeing this now makes me so frustrated because it's like we're selling this false narrative of motherhood through advertisement mm. society and all this where then you are jumping into this and then you you see all yeah this is how motherhood should look like and then mm. you're questioning yourself like why am i not able to do this why am i not able to to enjoy this to the fullest why am i questioning myself so for me it felt like like I am the problem because mm -hmm. obviously society thinks this is what motherhood is. So obviously everyone else thinks this is how it should look like. And seems like I'm just shitty. At, like I'm just shitty. Like I can't, just can't do it. So. Yeah. And that's why I find having a word for this transition, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. development, this change, this is matrescence, this kind of feeling disconnected, discombobulated, feeling like you're not doing things right is, yeah, is part of of it and yeah. uh yeah it can, can kind of be a bit more normalizing in a sense and i i love i do some teaching with um pregnant people and i love to sort of say this like there's a word for how you're feeling and how you're going to feel and like lean back on that and it's a growing body of research and yeah it makes sense but it can feel kind of confronting at the time so something you said there about the whole adolescence thing as well earlier on at the end of the day anytime anyone is going to 
stop and think, when was the last time you felt hormonal? When was the last time you felt rage? When was the last time you felt like you didn't know your body or whatever? This is always, always associated with adolescence. And as we know, not a lot of research has been done with matrescence. There are new studies coming out. There's a great TED talk by Alexander Sachs. Um, there's a lot of people out there. Uh, Lucy Jones's book, Matrescence, came out. And mm. um, there's other people like Hesse Duda. There's a pile of other people who are bringing out books because they're trying to write about something now just to have something out there to say, mm. you know, this is... There's information, but there is a growing need, obviously, for the research that needs to be done. But for us, when it comes to your professionalism as a psychologist, we really want to kind of hone in on, especially being international families living in the Netherlands, where we're kind of, in some ways, the medical system here is more cure-based than prevention-based. And sometimes we feel like we're fighting a system where we're like, well, we don't know what to expect. And they have a very different birthing system here where we work with the Verloskundigas and the Kramzorgs, and we kind of feel a bit disconnected with the, the house arts here. So when we kind of look at it some people say that when you have your baby um it's well known that they say you know oh you see it in the movies and the tv shows you have your baby they're in your arms and you're like oh my god i'm so in love with you i've never had it and everything is picture rosy and as maren said like those ads are like everything that's wonderful and that's not reality we really want to kind of touch on the fact that velocity might mention to you that it can take six months for bonding with your child but meanwhile your body is actually working over time just like you were in adolescence, except this time it really comes out of pack because it comes quite instantaneously. You're growing it through pregnancy, but then you give birth, which is a whole realm of other hormones. And into day four, there's this whole regurgitation of your hormones happening. So one of the things everyone's going to know is about oxycodone. Um, oxy Oxytocin. Oxytocin. Yeah. I was going to say oxycodone. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's the 1980s bad times. The, the oxytocin. So this is when anyone holds a baby, they're going to be flooded with this because this is going to be a something natural that we have. But it's, it's a love okay. hormone. It's so a love cool. hormone. It's like yeah. Connect. And yeah. And the thing is, um, this is happening to you, which is amazing. But the thing is, your brain as a mom, sleep deprived, deprived, trying to figure out how to breastfeed, maybe, you know, there's a whole heap of other things. As we discussed in your self-identity episode earlier, a lot of things are happening between your mind and your hormones, and they're not really connected a lot of the time. Is there some way that we can kind of like, is there a way we can help to identify certain things that we'll be able to say to ourselves, okay, this is not the reality. This is just my exhaustion. This is just me trying so hard. I need to give myself a bit more of a break because there's nothing we can do to our hormones because that's going to happen. So mm -hmm. is there something we can do for ourselves to better understand how to help ourselves progress through this? Yes. So I think what you're saying is about knowing, so having knowledge around the fact that this is such a big shift, having a baby, pregnancy, you know, estrogen and progesterone rise massively during pregnancy and then fall following birth. That's where we often hear about the baby blues, which is what you what you were speaking about. And that's the sort of sudden hormonal drop and shift that can come with mood changes, tearfulness, um, some anxiety, things like that. Yeah, that hormone thing sort of levels out to, you know, not to sort of pre-pregnancy levels, but levels out as, as the kind of postpartum experience continues over those few weeks. But there is a lot of hormones at play in terms of, yeah, oxytocin, as you were saying, breastfeeding hormones, prolactin and things like that, that kind of, yeah, keep you at a, um, I suppose, a kind of hormonally vulnerable state for, for a while. So I guess the first thing is knowing that, educating yourself as much as possible to be like, okay, this is what's going on in my body at this point. I suppose what you're also al alluding to a bit is like the mood changes or whether something, when something feels like it could be akin to postpartum depression or anxiety. And for that, what I would be looking at if I was seeing somebody is if you're feeling kind of distressed by how you're feeling quite consistently. So if it's over a number of days or weeks and you just feel like, okay, I know that there's a lot going on in my body and I'm sleep deprived and there's hormones, but I really just feel very low and it's distressing or I feel not like myself or I feel like restless and anxious all the time and it's causing distress. And it doesn't matter how big or small that is. If you're feeling distressed, then it's important to look into it further, be by connecting to your partner or friends or professionals. Does that answer that a little bit either? Yeah, it's it's just the fact that I think for many people is they have this expectation of having this wonderful feeling of I'm a mother now. And the thing is, matrices is actually a very big unknown. There's no guarantee. There's no one road. It's mm -hmm. like 
everyone's going to have a very different experience, whatever there is. And as I said, like there is not a lot of research out there. And because we're all individuals, we really have to take it a very holistic approach. Mm. And so some things might work for one person, they mightn't work for the other. So as you say, if we can really empower ourselves by understanding how our body is going to be working with the hormones and chemical changes that will be happening in our body, that might help us that way. But for the matricins angle, it's a case of matricins is not just I've given birth, it's it's for the rest of your life. Mm. And so it's trying to help us kind of being like, okay, this is my new stage. It's like adolescence. I've gone from being a child to into an adolescence and then you never think about it. You just go, I went through adolescence and now I'm an adult and boom, you're done. But with matricins, it's like, what are the lasting maybe chemicals or hormones that we actually have that are forever more playing with us, I guess, would be a mm. question to, to see yeah, if there's an answer. Like, do we have a definitive, hey, this is something that you will always have because you've now become a mother. In terms of brain changes, and that's a, it's a very kind of new area or like a emerging area there there are different differences that you see in mothers versus non-mothers um and part of that is through pregnancy the brain brain changes in pregnancy but things like um hippocampus which is to do with memory lives like really in the center of the brain that shows a restructuring in in mothers that is not present in in non-mothers and that doesn't return to its previous state there will be always a little bit changed yeah the things like gray matter increase which is that neuroplasticity your ability to adapt take on new complex behaviors these things like yeah if you want a job done ask a mom because she'll be able to multitask and also you know spin something on her head at the same time like there's that is a brain change that happens um but she won't remember she won't remember <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that's also interesting about the memory is so I was reading a research that said about 80% of new mothers will report a subjective change in their cogn cognition and that would be a decline. So mm -hmm. we're thinking about memory, concentration, absent-mindedness, things like that. And the research suggests that in testing people that that subjective change is true in pregnancy, but they didn't find the same change in postpartum. And that was like up to six weeks after having a baby. So it's a subjective feeling of like, okay, I can't remember things. I'm just con can't concentrate. I'm all absent-minded. That's definitely there in pregnancy, says the research, but not afterwards, which I think is quite interesting. It's more like the feeling of like, oh, I'm just completely changed. There's something I can't quite remember things the same way or whatever is sort of a symptom of the matrescence. I think that you are like completely forever different. Yeah, I was I was going to say one of the papers that I read, uh, which is called Matrices: The Lifetime Impact of Motherhood on Cognition and Brain. They were talking about how, again, the neuroplasticity as well during the peripartum, they're saying they're long lasting because they were saying that the novel changes of the postpartum period involve increased responsibilities, you know, which results in the increased cognitive load for the new mothers. And the cognitive load is increased across the entire lifespan, but it changes, you know, as the child's needs and they grow. But they mm. do say that the long term exposure to a more complex environment, aka raising a child, is beneficial for the brains of humans and animals, suggesting that the increases in environmental complexity in motherhood may result in increased cognitive reserve in later life. So right. that's great news for yeah, us yeah. as we get older. Yeah. So we can remember everything again. Well... <laughs> Well, if you think about executive functioning, I don't know whether you've heard that term, but it's it's the front of your brain. It's the area. It's like sometimes thought of as the sort of conductor of your of your brain, something that's sort of managing it. And those that area has such massive demands in in parenthood, but motherhood specifically. You might need to yeah, feed your baby, remember snacks, get out the house, get on time. All of these things are yeah. It takes a lot of executive function to sort of complete tasks and manage that. And um, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to know that that sort of change will be sort of protective for your brain later on, perhaps. That's, I mean, that perhaps. sounds... We'll perhaps, find out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all individual, isn't it? But that's, um, yeah, I think that's, that's good. something that I sometimes talk to clients about in the difference between dads and mums on a brain level is that there's some research about the amygdala, which is like the fear center of the brain. And the amygdala in both parents, um, this can be also, you know, like same sex parents or whatever, in both parents, it increases as your baby is born. And that's to do about, you know, if you fear things, you're going to keep them safe, you're going to be more worried, you're going to, you know, 
put something in the plug socket to check that it's safe, all those kind of things. But in mums, it stays at an increased size. And for dads, it can shrink back down, not to pre-baby level, but it shrinks back down. And that sometimes is why you see the different behavior in mums and dads around risk. You know, you might get a dad who's like launching his kid into the air or his kind of, yeah, perhaps just doing more overtly risky things. And a mum, these are sweeping generalizations, but a mum who might be more tending to kind of stay close and is more aware of the risk and the fear. Yeah, I find that quite helpful to kind of explain, to normalise what we see quite a lot in these sort of gender differences that actually there's quite significant brain differences after having a baby for different genders. You're actually reminding me here of something I had read as well with research for the the oxytocin where with mothers, obviously because we're the nurturing, we're probably breastfeeding or we've given birth, all that kind of a thing. The children will always have that from us, but their oxytocin comes from play from the father. The child gets oxytocin differently. So they get it from the caring aspect from the mother. That's why they come to us maybe for the caring because that's where they get it. But actually get they get that same feeling from their father when there's like big plays happening. Mm. And yeah, so, which are both just different ways we're coming to the same thing which is connection love yeah. feeling held which is what oxytocin makes you want more of and makes you kind of accept when it's there so yeah that's that's interesting yeah because uh yeah there was because uh usually bedtime you know you're you're fighting just to get your child to sleep and meanwhile dad's like throwing the child all over the bed or whatever but it's actually that's actually their way to bond the same way as you'd be hugging your child mm. bit of science there yeah <laughs> what i also just find so difficult is that and this comes back when we talk about the executive function and getting things done is that we are getting all these things done and on top of this we have to have this huge task of emotional regulation for mm -hmm. us and for the children, because it's not just, okay, we have we have to get out the house. So we have this whole list, but it's not that I say, all right, shoes on, clothes on, get your bag, let's get out the door. Like I can't I wish. just yeah. do it. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but exactly. I wish exactly. But it's, all right, so let's get ready. What do you want to like? We have to do all these tasks while being emotional available, by while being emotional in regulation with us, with our child. So I think this is what I found so difficult that I do have all this to do and then I need to do it in a good way and I need to do it in a friendly way, a nice way and calming and all this stuff where this is where you get then overwhelmed managing all the like the, the hard to do's with then the emotional part of it and yeah yeah, yeah. Like, and it's, it's, a, it's a massive it's a massive skill and a massive transition to be able to that you have to manage your own emotions at the same time as managing the emotions of one or more children like that is such a shift and especially as we alluded to before that children trigger stuff in us they do they they push the buttons we didn't know were so sensitive and so you're also managing that and i think that's a big part of the matrescence picture is kind of being able to tend to those sore points as well and kind of grow yourself up there's a really nice podcast actually called grow yourself up which is about sort of this journey matrescence and everything like that but it's about um yeah how can you how are you looking after yourself how are you mothering yourself or caring for yourself as you're doing the mothering for others for matrescence like when you're an adult uh, when you end enter into adolescence i mean your brain obviously isn't fully fun uh, functioning basically and you're just trying to get through life as it were living under the roof of your parents but from matrescence is there something we could be doing for ourselves to say okay i mean obviously there's talk therapy hence there's a podcast and we're talking about this but talk therapy is great that we can keep talking about what we're going through but it just does feel a lot of the time that it's a case of we could be moaning or we could be complaining or you know we're not grateful might be even mm. one of the worst things i could have heard but mm. the thing is it feels like in earlier days people just got on with the mothering aspect and when you think about your mother or i don't know movies and whatever no one ever complains about it and it just feels like i don't know if it's these days where we're kind of are we becoming more of a generation of kind of like okay we need to talk about this and be re truthful about this than just ignoring it and burying it deep inside but and i wonder it, whether in previous generations they just wouldn't have had the language for it or they wouldn't realize that it was important I and mean, we were talking about generations that literally didn't feel their emotions or they wouldn't didn't have language for that or they would have shut that down really quickly so to be kind of attuned to the way you're feeling during that transition is probably not likely to have happened in previous generations i think there's a sort of a gift and a curse of being our generation of mothers where there's so many things you can think about and look at and it's helpful to kind of understand it but it also yeah can be too much sometimes as well yeah because i i do feel like there's also the shame element of things that you're thinking like oh no one else is talking about it so i don't feel like 
can. Mm. And so you've got a shame and you've got a guilt and you've got the overwhelm and then it becomes this crushing weight then on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Which is why as much as possible, yeah, in conversations like these and other conversations and talking to your mate at the playground or whatever, but this is a normal part of it. This is not, this is, this is part of becoming a mother, part of being a mother is sort of experiencing these challenges and being able to talk openly. And then the openness reduces the shame. It's okay to feel things are hard and this is a big transition and your body, mind, soul, social life, everything has shifted. Like that's part of it. I really hope that this information is hopefully when, I don't know, our children maybe one day have children, that this is a crucial piece of information that they will give you at your midwife, at your doctor, that they prepare you for this because no one, I have never, until six months ago, I had never heard of this. Never. Mm -hmm. And I consider myself someone who likes to read about these things, likes to educate themselves about psychological facts. I'm coming from this background. So even I, who who is in this topic somewhat, this was news to me. Mm. And so I can only imagine how people who have not been in contact with this have no clue about this, have no clue to, who to talk to, how to address this, how to talk about so it just boggles my mind. But the feeling is... was not new to you, right? Yeah, no, no, no. The no, feeling the is feeling, yeah, the yeah, feeling yeah, is the transition. Yeah, that yeah. and it, the language and the way of thinking yeah, about yeah. it and the research and everything, that's the newness. Because yeah. actually the feeling is there. Like everybody, yeah, exactly. every yeah, new mother yeah. will experience this. Yeah. Something, and putting this, this into shift. words, exactly. And yeah. not jumping to the conclusion that I feel this. Okay, I'm aware of this, but there's nothing that explains this so i must be wrong this must be a me problem this must like it's an individual thing and it's not true it's not an individual thing and this mm. is needs to be talked about and i really don't understand how the philosopher is not telling you this and i'm not saying that i blame them because the information is just not out there even for the mm. medical personnel so i really really hope that this is a topic that we bring into the conversation is talked about like adolescents this is what you go through. And then simultaneously, which is crazy for me to even think about, but then the age that we usually are having our children now later is then like a beginning of 30s, but some mm. even pushing it into their mid 30s, and late 30s. And this is when the next thing of menopause and premenopause yeah, yeah. is coming I, in. I was hoping someone was going to say that because yeah, yeah. the perimenopause yeah. that can progesterone starts changing in like age 35, which yeah. lots of people understandably haven't even thought about their families at that point. And then yes, yeah, so not only are you having this massive transition of matrescence and all the hormonal brain changes, you've also got perimenopause and all those symptoms and everything that goes alongside it. It's like, I see quite a lot of clients who are in this zone just being like, what is happening? And it's like, well, so many things are happening. <laughs> like take a, take a step away from your actual kind of your context, your relationships and stuff like that. Unlike your body is doing so much and that's contributing to these kind of confusing feelings a lot of the time. Is yeah. there any way that we're going to be able to help ourselves then understand the situation we're in? Is there any way we're going to be able to ground ourselves, I guess, to be able to stop ourselves spiraling? I suppose for me, it always comes down to arming yourself with as much information as feels right. So listening, reading, talking, taking on information that kind of helps to ground and understand that. Yeah, I suppose ways of acknowledging the feelings and acknowledging the shift and yeah kind of paying respect to that you know that might be in conversations that you have with your friends it might be in therapy it could be in journaling and I'll put some sort of journal prompts for this episode some things to kind of look at to kind of explore take a sort of a bit of a zoom out of what is this matrescence for you what what feels kind of okay about it what's making you feel proud what's make what's feeling overwhelming to kind of um yeah look at it a bit on and sort of respect that it is a process and it's not just something that's going to feel okay one day to the next it's like a whole the whole developmental process. Yeah, and this is really so important to be open about this and to to talk about this and really open up the the conversation and share this. And we have gotten so great feedback from the episodes that we've done about this topic from really people reaching out to us and saying thank you so much that you start talking this like start this conversation because I needed to hear this. I needed to hear that I'm not wrong. I needed to hear I'm not failing. I needed mm. to hear that this is not not me just sucking at all of this and finding it hard. And also this is not me being wrong to 
not finding the full bliss of my mm. being in motherhood mm. because this was also a very very big revelation for me where I thought I'm going to be a mother and then this is going to be my new thing and I will mm. love it and I cannot wait to do nothing else than being there yeah. and which is I had that. an extreme amount of pressure to put on yourself isn't yeah. it but yeah. that's a common yeah. common story yeah yes I, I really felt like finally I will be happy I will arrive I will arrive within me. I will arrive in my being, in my my destiny for my life. And then I was there and I was like, fuck, no, this is like not where I want to be at all. This can't be my destiny. Yeah, that's not destiny. my destiny. Exactly. Yeah, so I, yeah. but that was also great for me to see my passions and my, my strength in my baby life that there were already things that were great about my life and there was already a purpose. And my full purpose in life is not just being a mother. It is one element of my being and realizing that and being okay with the fact that I am a mother, comma, and I'm also this and that, and I can be that and I can empower myself to be that and I'm having a child and my life is also going on for me in all the different aspects and I think this is really that was a big thing for me to realize that I am a mother and I'm so much more mm -hmm. and I am allowed to do all that and I'm allowed to explore all that and be the the mother that I want to be and shape my my role as as I want to live it. Yeah. And I think when you were just saying that, it occurred to me to say that matrescence and this whole journey and everything you've just described is really separate from loving your child yes. and loving your baby. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, you all love them like yeah. Yeah. nothing else and still yeah. feel uncomfortable yeah. in the change or still feel like there's a lot of identity shifts or, you know, all of the stuff we've spoken about. It's because that can feel quite distressing for people of just be like, well, I, I love my baby. So why do I feel so at sea? And yeah. you do because it's separate. You're becoming a different version of yourself. A newer, better, stronger. Newer, better, stronger, new and improved. It's a lot. And I mean, this topic is just so massive that honestly, I think we could just keep talking about it because there's, there's a multitude of different angles. And we spoke to you already about the self-identity, which I think a lot of people really resonated in. And then we had Elena also talking about the other aspect, which really was trying to encapsulate so many different topics. This is an ongoing conversation. And I think I think it's going to reach out to everyone. And some people will be receptive to it now. Some people People mightn't be in the mind space for it now, but this is always something they can always come back to. And if anyone has any questions, you can always send us in. And this is another topic we can always pick up again, because I think this is just going to be an ongoing conversation for forever more on yeah, podcasts, well, on books. If somebody wants to um, share their journey of matrescence as well, that could be really interesting of just being like, yeah, exploring that. You know, what was it like for different individual stories? We did, you know, you've done about the birth stories, but what about the birth of the mother stories? What about this yeah. matrescence? Yeah. Just an idea. Sorry, I'm coming up with content. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> extra, work, also, extra work, <laughs> extra work. Extra work, sorry. So, no, no, but this is one one call out. Please get in touch with us if you want to share your story and your experiences because like the birth stories, like you Naomi know, just said, the more we hear about the different varieties and the different colors and the different ways that this topic presents itself, the, the more you can... Real, the more I hope there will be a story out there that you as the listener can connect to or maybe you hear three different stories and out of these three you put your picture together so it's really really important that we open up this conversation and I also want to invite the people to this conversation who are feeling regretting motherhood because this is also a part of going into matrescence and realizing and again this has nothing to do with not loving your child and not wanting your your child in your life but if you feel like if you could turn back the time and this motherhood reverse this motherhood journey for you and if this is a topic that you've been struggling with then also this is a space where you can reach out to us and we are more than happy to share this story with our listeners because we really want to shine a light a 360 light an angle on this topic of what it become what it means to become a mother and also how to deal with the feelings that come with it and if you are feeling and you are finding yourself in a spot of regretting motherhood or any struggle with that then help getting help and seeking out and dealing with this is you're not alone on this and there is a lot of professionals in our community who are more than welcome to help you guide yourself through this whole process help you understand and make these these things easier for you and, and with, with that, that <laughs> exactly and with that please reach out to us on instagram which 
which is the Damn Parenting Podcast, where you will also find additional information to all of our episodes. We are coming out with an episode every Monday and every Wednesday. If you want to get in touch with us, do it via Instagram, Damn Parenting Podcast. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share our episodes. Share the knowledge. Get other people on the same page. And like Naomi said, knowledge is power. Knowledge is key. So let's make sure that we support each other in this whole parenting and motherhood journey and provide each other with the information that all the mothers, all the parents out there can receive and need and get some piece of information that they might have been missing to fulfill their picture and their understanding of what they're going through. So with that, you can catch us every Monday and every Wednesday. Give us a five-star rating and we will hear you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye.